Thank you very much, and it is an honor to be here to speak about our friend Gerardo Lechevalier. There's a very well-known story about uh, uh, a, a television interview of Gerardo Lechevalier to Major Roberto Davison, which I will not repeat here because I think we all know that. And, uh, but I, I, I wanted to begin with just remembering that because I think that's a very uh, accurate picture of what Gerardo Le Chevalier was. He was a, a man with no fear, a man who didn't love life, who showed that, uh, how much he loved life in everything he did. He was a free spirit. He loved freedom and democracy in the Americas. He rejected abuse and violations of the rights of his fellow human beings. And at the same time, he didn't think too much about what he was going to do. He just did it. And he has very few, preju he has very few prejudices or ideological uh, problems that would uh, stop him from doing what he felt and uh, how he felt it and uh, do it any way he could, any way he could act. He acted thought big and act big. He was an internationalist and he had the, fact, the, the, the strange quality of feeling a, a citizen, a member of the community in each country in which he served. I very much remember him in the election in Haiti and uh, discussions we had among us and the Haitians and all that. And I mean, you really feel that, that he was a man who felt, he felt for this country as he also felt for El Salvador, his country, his own uh, fatherland and, uh, or motherland, and he felt for Paraguay, and he felt for every country he was in. And he understood that uh, democracy has a lot to do also with personal engagement, with a permanent, per, 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 per permanent uh, a personal compromise to make it effective. And that uh, he, even if he took a responsibility, his responsibility had also gave him the rights to speak out in the countries in which he was serving. He didn't mind speaking his word or what he thought. He felt that if he was there working and making sacrifices, he had a right to speak, and he did, he did speak. So he was a citizen of democracy. Uh, an actor in all, the, all these countries, he had the right to speak the truth. He shouldn't accept the... Uh, uh, manipulations or, or any, any shy, we wouldn't be shy in front of abuse, and of course, he would never accept fraud. But he also loved the countries, and he was in love with their, with their history. He loved to talk about politics, about local politics and politics in Central America and Latin America, and especially in his own country of El Salvador. I think that, that human nature, was probably the richest thing of Gerardo Lechevalier. To we'll show why he played things, how, how he did, why he did things the way he did them, and what motivated him. He had a capacity to be practical, to be very effective, and I think we really miss him a lot for his uh, effectiveness, for the capacity of doing things, of having things done, but at the same time for speaking his mind and defending his ideas even as he was acting in other countries and in other places. And no, no other country probably took, his, took so much of him as uh, Haiti. When we were working together in 2005 and 2006, he was the electoral chief of Minusta in Haiti. He worked with us. It wasn't his first time in Haiti. He had already been in Port-au-Prince. He knew the country, he knew his history, he knew his characters. He felt real love for these, that people, and, uh, and, uh, and but at the same time, he spoke very hard when he thought he had to speak hard. He condemned the passions and interests that he felt were being an obstacle to peace. Uh, he didn't like and was very strong against the, uh, the strange causes that sometimes uh, dominate Haitian politics. And uh, since uh, since the moment in which the United Nations uh, began working there, he accompanied political dialogue between political parties. 
and fought very hard to, to build the peace. Of course, uh, we'll also remember, we'll always remember him also for what he did in El Salvador, for his very, very valuable uh, uh, work in the, in the peace process of Contadora, which uh, uh, helped him also, served him in, in other positions later. And I very well remember him. I, I think we, we met afterwards. We even discussed the possibility of him joining our team at the OAS. But I probably remember him most in the if I had to like, make a last, last memory of him, I will remember that morning in February 2006 where we were going around town about 6.30, 6.45 in the morning, and there were all those Haitians waiting in line to vote. Geraldo was a happy person. He had, he had fun in his life, but I never saw him so happy. It was very uh, clear for me that... Uh, Nothing could make him more happy than the magic of democracy working. And democracy was working that day and uh, still working, and we hope it will continue to work. And certainly his family, his home, his country, his country of El Salvador, his country of Paraguay, his country of Haiti, will always remember this human being that can be the best, uh, the best uh, uh, example of the best uh, stimulus for us to continue working in this in which he believes so much. Thank you very much.